of sessions that we are calling Combating Pandemic Pounds and Coronavirus Carbs. I am Sonia Fuqua, the Director of Clinical Quality for the Community Health Center Association of Mississippi. And again, we do welcome you to our session today. In 2016, the Mississippi Primary Care Association, which was the name at the time, in conjunction with its community health center members, initiated the 65 by 65 Obesity Prevention Challenge. We recognized obesity as an epidemic in Mississippi that contributes to the chronic health conditions resulting in decreased lifestyle mobility and increased healthcare costs. Community Health Center Association of Mississippi is taking a long-term approach to reduce weight and increase healthy lifestyles by launching an initiative to move 65,000 Mississippians out of obesity by the year 2065. One of the greatest barriers to staying healthy is maintaining a healthy lifestyle. This barrier has been exacerbated with the many lifestyle changes in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We've had lockdowns, shutdowns, business closures, and this is including gyms, dietary changes due to the lockdowns and or working remotely. People are eating more, they're cooking more because of the lockdown not to mention the decrease in physical activity, as opposed to walking around the office or the health center, you may be simply walking from the front of the house to the back of the house. The 65 by 65 Obesity Prevention Challenge is a three-part initiative. It involves the primary care association level, which focuses on education and awareness, the community health center level, which focuses on overweight and obesity primary care. And then there's the patient level, which is the challenge, the 65 by 65 challenge itself. Now the healthcare association prior to COVID will be looking forward to many opportunities from our level. You may recall during our 65 by 65 challenge that we would have posters and flyers for the health centers to use. We had little happies like portion plates and measuring cups, pedometers or fitness trackers that we uh, provided to health centers. And the health centers themselves may have encouraged their patients to use meal and exercise planners and apps and may still be doing that. And all of our activities would culminate in August with the promotion of a 65 by 65 race at all of our health centers again in August during National Health Center Week. And these were opportunities for technical assistance and training from the health centers about obesity care to their patients. I'd like to mention that despite evidence of the cost effectiveness of physical activity counseling in primary care, only one third of patients report the receipt of physical activity counseling by their primary care providers. Now, the same is not said about nutrition counseling, but still an indictment. This, this initiative can assist you with your counseling, both on physical activity and nutrition. As we look at the state of obesity in Mississippi, we see that Mississippi, now this is data as of September, 2020, Mississippi now has the highest obesity rate in the nation. Our obesity rate for adults is 40.8%. That's up from 28.1% in 2004 and from 15% in 1990. So you see we are seriously increasing. 40% of Mississippi children are overweight or obese. High rates of obesity in Mississippi cause great concern because overweight children have an 80% chance of becoming overweight or obese adults. Not only that, but as a direct result of the obesity epidemic, healthcare professionals are seeing a significant rise in chronic illness in children. Obese children are more than twice as likely to have type two diabetes 
as children of normal weight. And then we have the impact that COVID-19 has placed on us. Some people have lost jobs and struggled just to get food on the table, not to mention trying to decide if the food is healthy or not, all due to economic challenges. And then in terms of primary care, some people are faced with fear of actually going back in for face-to-face -face visits. They're getting comfortable with the opportunities for telehealth. There has been some problems with access to care because some of our health centers have actually had to close due to COVID outbreaks in their community or at the health center itself. I had one provider actually tell me that they are seeing patients, both adult and pediatric, who have gained 20 to 30 pounds since March, since the start of the pandemic. So we do see many challenges as a due to the impact of COVID-19. And of course, we mentioned earlier when I talked about physical activity, the fact that that has really decreased because people are staying at home. We have to be mindful of social distancing. We're not getting exercise just from walking around in our various communities or going to gyms or to malls, shopping centers or what have you. So we are not physically active. And then our eating regimens have changed. Some people are cooking more. They're using what they have in their cabinets and in their freezers. They're not going to the store every other day. They're not going out to eat at restaurants. So they're cooking more at home. If you're on Facebook, you will see people posting their recipes and their, their foods that they are trying. Again, experimenting with cooking, eating more and they are often not healthy options. And then again, the flip side of that, of those people who are economically challenged and they may not have the foods that they need to look at healthy choices. So let's talk some about overweight and obesity. We know that it has some genetic factors that some people may be predisposed to gaining weight because of a hereditary hereditary link. There are psychological factors and COVID-19 has truly affected psychological factors. There is depression due to decreased socialization, economic challenges. Some families have lost members due to COVID-19. And then this is particularly, um, they're particularly mindful of that during this holiday season season. And then there are others who have experienced COVID-19 themselves. So stress and depression is definitely something that we are seeing. And then some of the causes for overweight and obesity also include the environmental factors. And I have talked about that quite a bit, mentioning about the diet and exercise or lack thereof. And then there are other causes like certain rare diseases such as hypothyroidism, Cushing syndrome, and certain neurological problems. And then the use of certain drugs can also cause you to gain weight. Steroids in particular, I've had an experience with them and they actually make me feel hungry. So there's the tendency to eat more because of the drug. People are at increased risk of developing high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or high glass, uh, uh, triglycerides when they are overweight and obese, of course, leading to heart disease and stroke. And then diabetes, overweight people have more than double the risk of developing diabetes. And I already mentioned how that affects our children who are obese, obese and overweight. Sleep apnea is also a health risk for those who are obese and overweight. It causes people to stop breathing for short periods of time while sleeping, and this could lead to heart failure. And they wake up feeling like they haven't rested any during the night. There are increased risks for cancer of the uterus, cervix, ovary, breast, gallbladder, and colon for women and prostate for men rectum and colon cancer. So many of our cancers that our uh, patients are suffering with are, they suffer with the risk factor of obesity and overweight. 
We look at health risks for, of obesity and overweight. You have um, osteoarthritis, deteriorating joint disorder, the knees, the hips, and lower back, people struggling to walk uh, correctly because they're feeling that extra pain, people with gallbladder disease. Gallstones are more common in those who are overweight. And then gout, a joint disease caused by high blood levels of uric acid, and it's also very painful. And people are carrying around extra weight, and of course, it's putting extra pressure on the joints, causing them to experience that pain and discomfort. But there is good news. You can reduce your risk of developing coronary artery disease and will have lower blood pressure and cholesterol levels just by reducing five to 10% of your body weight and can result in improved health. You can reduce your chance of developing type two diabetes by up to 2.5% or more. Being overweight or obese is a major risk factor for developing cholesterol or gallstones and so losing weight reduces your risk of forming those. And then as we mentioned, the many different types of cancer where obesity and overweight was a risk. Certain types of cancer, such as breast cancer and cancers of the esophagus, kidneys and colon have been linked to obesity. So again, the good news, if we continue to promote our 65 by 65 obesity prevention challenge, we can help people ourselves lose that five to 10% body weight if needed to mitigate that factor. So I talked about the three pillars of the program and the one that the Community Health Center Association has is intervention by way of education and awareness, which is what we are introducing for you today. We are calling it combating pandemic pounds and corona, and we put virus in parentheses, carbs, because somebody called to my attention that people might think we were talking about beer, but coronavirus carbs. So this is a series of Friday Lunch and Learns, eight of them, no more than 30 minute webinars, and they will be recorded and placed on our Community Health Center Association YouTube channel. The videos may be viewed live as you are doing today. Those of you had the opportunity to join us and on demand. They can also be shared with your patients if desired. They are not meant to be burdensome, but an opportunity for empowerment and a reminder of what we already know. Just a little mental hygiene break. Maybe you can have a cup of coffee or begin to take your lunch as you get this, these uh, lay friendly presentations that again can be shared with your patients. It's not about um, management of the disease that we might be talking about. And it's not high level for continuing education, just an opportunity to talk and share. I always say that repetition deepens the impression. So the more we hear about it, the more we are empowered to do something about it. One of the outcomes of the pandemic is that everyone has had to become more comfortable with technology. Therefore, as I mentioned earlier, you can share these videos with your patients that you can document in their health record that you have provided patient counseling for them. Not only what you talk about while your patients are with you, but you have provided them an opportunity for more information. We're currently doing our childhood obesity management training sessions virtually, and the participants are joining us over Zoom. So people are getting comfortable with the virtual model of trainings, education, communication, and hopefully in the not too distant future, we can transition to a hybrid model where we'll have some face-to-face -face if we can do distance learning and you can still have the virtual opportunity. Today, we are having the introduction to the Combating Pandemic Pounds and Coronavirus Carbs series. And we have talked about obesity. We already have our meeting scheduled for January, which will be January the 8th. And they will be monthly, culminating in August 
with a to be determined National Health Center Week activity. We are hoping that we will have the opportunity for our uh, 20 by 65 by 65 community health center race walk activities, but naturally there is so much that's in the air because of our coronavirus pandemic. By then we hope many people have received their vaccinations and we are feeling comfortable getting out in larger gatherings that we are doing now. Again, they will be monthly. The next one will be January the 8th. Our topic will be nutrition and our presenter will be one of our colleagues from GA Carmichael Family Health Center. We welcome presenters from our community health centers. So we would love to highlight you, your health center and your expertise. If there are any of you who are viewing this today live, or if you are one of those who are looking at it on demand and you see a topic that you believe you have expertise in, I would love for you to reach out to me and maybe you can be one of our Friday Lunch and Learn presenters for our eight videos, Combating Pandemic Pounds and Coronavirus Cars. So we've had our introduction to the series. We've talked about the state of obesity in Mississippi and why we believe this is a, a challenge that we want to go ahead and, and promote and maintain. We don't want it to continuously be stalled by COVID-19. So now um, I will turn it over and see if there are any questions. And while you may be thinking about that, I did ask if everyone would put their name and organization in the chat so that we can have that documentation. So thank you so much for joining us for our brief video. Again, I'm Sonia Fuqua, the Director of Clinical Quality, and you can see there my email address if you want to let me know that you are interested in making a presentation. And I welcome any questions that you may have.